What's up guys, this is Just Analysis by DCD, episode number four. Today I'm gonna to be going over my match with Keenan Cornelius, or it wasn't necessarily a match, but my training session with Keenan Cornelius about six months ago at Legion HQ. So let's get into it. Us. So here I am, I'm just trying to, you know, bad mouth the camera, be all cool and stuff. And there's Keenan trying to act tough. So the match is about to start and here we go. So Keenan takes a shot and I pull guard. Whenever somebody takes a shot on you, it's always a good idea to, to act right after you, you defend the shot, whether that be a reshot or maybe a guard pull like I just did here. So just keep that in mind. And I pulled right into this Delahiva guard with the belt grip. And as you can see, I personally, let's just go back here. I personally always prefer to look for this pant grip here rather than the ankle. Now, why do I choose the pant grip rather than the ankle? The pant grip allows me to stay more attached to my opponent and it's much, much more difficult for our opponent to just kick away and, and break our grip. It's actually rather impossible to just kick away when you have this pant grip. So I highly, highly suggest the pant grip uh, when you're looking to transition to different other guards. If you're just trying to play De La Hiva, that's when the ankle grip is a good good option. You can uh, you can use that ankle grip to start going for Barambolo attacks or maybe a De La Hiva X, but I personally prefer, because I don't like those two attacks, to have the pant grip. Let's keep going here. So I, I like the belt just to have something and I'm kind of just waiting for, for Keenan to do something. And he grabs my, my pant leg here with a cross grip, which is kind of odd of him, but he really, really likes this attack. He likes to grab my, my cross grip and he likes to pull my leg over to the leg drag. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's that strong of an attack, but he seems to really like it. I don't know why. But anyway, let's keep going. So I break the grip, very simple break, break, grip break, and I do something different that I normally don't do, but I noticed that it was a great option because he had grabbed cross, uh, that cross grip. It was easy for me to just reach right up to that tricep grip, and now I'm in this laser guard position. Now the laser guard position is a really, really strong position, especially if I can get my left leg, uh, or excuse me, my left foot on his hip. It, it makes the position extremely strong. I'm basically dominating his entire side here. And it's going to be really, really difficult for him to do anything. The laser guard is basically a collar sleeve position, just like on steroids. It's, it's incredibly powerful. So let's keep going here. And as you can see, I have both feet on the hip now. And with both feet on the hip, I am capable of moving my hips and I can start looking for these different X guard transitions. That are, that's what I'm basically always looking for. And as you can see, with this laser guard position, uh, I always want to be tracking this far arm of my opponent just as if it was a call just as if I was in a collar sleeve position because when you're both in collar sleeve and in laser guard you constantly need to be using your your free leg that's not on the hip to be blocking uh, your opponent's uh, arm that you're not controlling so now you have basically complete control over the upper body we always want to make sure to use all our limbs whenever we're we're doing jiu-jitsu right and as you can see, I kind of just do a nice little scoop under technique. This is one of my favorite techniques, actually. So I extend away, and I'm, I'm kind of pulling on my side. And now, now that I'm on my side, it's going to be very, very easy for me to let go of the tricep and reach for that underhook and then scoop, do a forward shrimp underneath my opponent's body. And as, you, as you'll see as well, I'm going to use my right leg, my right hook here, right behind my opponent's knee to allow me to scoop underneath Keenan. And, and start getting into that single X position that I'm always looking for. And I scoop under there. And you see how you, you, it's a it's really quick technique. I'm not going to go back. But you see how my knee enters before my foot because I keep that foot on the hip the entire time as I'm doing this laser guard entry into the single leg X. So now I'm into the single leg X. And I always like to off balance my opponent right away when I'm in the single leg X. I think that's something that's underutilized, even at the highest level, right when you enter these really, really strong single leg X positions or, or any really strong position, you want to start off balancing your opponent right away. Uh, in doing so, your opponent's not going to be able to defend and encounter you right away. So really, really good idea to always off balance your opponent when you enter into these positions. 
here I am in the single leg X. And as you can see, my opponent's knee is on the mat here. Um, in my DVD that I just released on Jiu-Jitsu X, I go over all the different reactions that my opponent gives and how to, how to defend them and how to attack from them, the best and most efficient ways to attack from them. So that's enough plugging there, I'll keep going here. So as you can see, Keenan is looking for my, my, my sleeve grip here. I'm always, always trying to hide this sleeve grip because that is one of the best options for, for Keenan in order to stop all my stand-up techniques. If he's able to, to grab this sleeve grip, uh, it's, it's gonna be difficult for me to sweep uh, if I don't break it, but we'll move on to that. We'll get on to that later. So here I am hiding the grip and I get that sleeve grip and I notice that it's time to just stand up. And this time I'm gonna use a, a really strong, just a classic technical stand-up. As you can see here, I kicked away and now my hand is on the mat. I'm gonna pull my right leg out, out from underneath me, and that's gonna allow me to stand up really, really strong in this position. It's gonna be hard for Keenan to do anything with the, with the grip that he has here. So I pull up, and I grab the knee, and I'm gonna start reaching for the belt. As you can see, I, I, I like to do this. I like to switch from the leg to this kind of double leg position. This allows me, especially when my opponent's hands are on the mat, it's gonna be difficult to just run him over. Because if, if, if I were to just try to, to let me switch to my arrow. If I were to just try to run him over in this direction, I, his hands would be on the mat and it would just follow, 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 and I wouldn't be able to, to take him down. So what I prefer to do actually, as you'll see here in a second, I prefer to, uh, let me get back to this other tool here. I prefer to just let go of the, the pants here and I start reaching for almost like a double leg, but I know I'm not gonna really finish the double leg, but I know I'm gonna at least get the, the back control of Keenan. So let's keep going here and I'll show you guys. So I start reaching for the back. Normally on the back, I like to do this technique in which I, I go to the side and I try and trip up my opponent's knee. As you can see here, see how I, I step to the side and I just have this, this classic, uh, one would call it a, not necessarily a gable grip. This is a gable grip. This is more so, mm, this is more so just, just, just holding, just like so, nothing, nothing crazy. And it looks like Keenan here, as you can see, he's looking for this uh, kind of throw in which, uh, in which he'll, he'll grab my elbow and then he'll use his leg and he'll try and throw me to the right, which I, I kind of know he's about to go for that. So I walk around to the other side. And as you can see, I'm gonna bring my knee around his leg in order to trip him up and force him to the ground. See, I try and even lift him here. And he rolls through a really, really nice defense by Keenan, and he takes a shot off as well. And now you see he even has my pant grip, and I have to, I have to defend this, or, or I'm going to get taken down. Anytime your opponent has a pant grip uh, and he's standing, it's going it, to, you should, you should be a little bit afraid that that he has the capability of taking you down. So it's always a great idea to get this, 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 uh, this cross face, I guess you could call it and see how my, my body is down. I'm gonna start sprawling my hips back and pulling and breaking that grip there, this grip here. So I break the grip and you'll see right away again, right after I break the grip, I know it's time to pull guard because a lot of action just occurred. It's a similar, same concept as before in regards to the shot, reshot, reshot or shot, pull concept. Right when your opponent acts and you, you defeat whatever he was doing, it's a great idea to act right away. Don't, don't give any time. Let's keep going here. So now you see I put him in the De La Hiva and I actually had his sleeve in this position. So let's just move back a second. So as I pull, I pull with his, his right arm controlled. See how I has, you saw for a second that I had his right tricep controlled. Let me just move back just a sec. Right here. See how I have this, this right tricep controlled? That means I can pull right away and just do a nice sweeping motion with my arms as I pull into the De La Hiva and extending the De La Hiva away and he's gonna fall. So it's a quick two points here for me. See how I extend and I have that leg. He, there's no defending that technique. It's really, really strong. And I end up in the single leg X position. Now, for me, I'm not afraid of Keenan's single leg X, but as you can see, I am grabbing this sleeve. Just as he was looking for a knee, he was trying to grab that sleeve so I, I couldn't stand up. I already had the sleeve right away. I'm always thinking, I'm trying to at least think one step ahead of my opponent at all times. And 
and here I am. When, I, when I'm passing the single leg X, I like to keep this sleeve personally. I like to keep this sleeve and I like to put, start putting knee pressure and then it, it's gonna be hard to see, but I preferably, what I'm trying to do and what I'm thinking of right now in this position, I'm trying to kind of open my hip to the side, which is gonna kind of peel off this grip. So as you can see, I'm switching here. I'm switching the sleeve grip. I want the sleeve grip uh, with my left hand, so then I could use my right hand to peel this grip off, uh, excuse me, peel this hook off, rather. Let's keep going here. So that's kind of the thought process that I have in the single X position when I'm actually passing the position. And ideally as well, as you can see, I, I failed to mention a second ago, his right leg is out of the single leg position. That means it's going to be way easier for me to pass this position. And when this leg is out, his attacks are, are a lot more limited. And my attacks are, are limitless, you could say. I have Barambolo attacks, many, many attacks from when the leg is out. But when that leg is in, like I was saying, it's not so easy to, to defeat this single leg position. That's why I always prefer when I enter the single leg position, when I'm on bottom, I always like to bring my, my leg inside, my right leg that is, in this situation, it's the right leg, inside both legs and have it as a hook underneath because that hook is also going to allow me to off balance my opponent um, rather than just be on the outside. And now, as you can see, Keenan grabbed the lapel, that sneaky little, I'm not going to say. But because he's grabbing the lapel, he's kind of accepted, you see how here? He's kind of, because he has the lapel, he's kind of accepting. Um, and I see that he's trying to pass this lapel. He's trying to go to like a, a worm X transition. I'm not a fan, I don't suggest it. But anyway, he's trying to do this and I step out because I notice that he's just trying to hook my leg. But when he goes for this transition, as you can see here in a second, see how he's kind of wrapping around my leg rather than holding my pants. If he were to hold my pants, I wouldn't be able to just step out like I did. But because he's he's kind of just hooking my leg now and he's kind of reaching for that lapel grip, trying to set up those worm guard techniques, I know that I'm capable of just pulling my leg out as I do here. See how he kind of lets go? I'll let go here in a second, try and pass. And now I feel that it's easy for me to just pull the leg out and now I'm in this kind of annoying lapel situation. We'll see what I do here. Right now, see, see how Keenan's uh, grip is here? He has basically both feet on one lapel. Now, it's, it's not gonna be possible for me to pass in this direction here because of this lapel grip. If I were to try and pass to the left, um, it, it just wouldn't be possible. The, the frame with the, with, the, with the lapel is too strong. So my concept or my, my goal here in this position is to at least take off one of the feet and start trying to Toriando, uh, trying to Toriando out of this situation. We'll see here in a second. So here we're just getting a nice uh, rest here. Um, a really good tip for beginners, especially uh, when you when you when you're in this kind of uh, situation in which uh, both both or your opponent is kind of taking a rest. It's a great idea to, to really take a deep breath. I always, especially in my matches, whenever I secure a position or I'm in kind of a transitionary position, I always try and like really tell myself like take a deep breath because things are about to get tough here in a second. So that's a really, really good tip um, for anyone really. If Yeah, you guys get it. If, if you're in a transitionary situation, you have a second to take a really deep breath, like all the way, and then exhale, it's gonna keep you nice and calm throughout the match and, and keep you thinking properly. And I'm kind of trying to figure out the situation now because everything Keenan does is a little odd. As you can see, this was a nice little transition I made here. So I kind of stand up, I'm looking at the grips. As I can see, I have a grip here. You can see here. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start taking this foot off. And I already have this pant grip, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have the ability to just do a quick Toriano pass. See, I take the leg off and do a quick hand on the hip. Uh, just the classic Toriano that you're taught in the, in the beginner class. But, I mean, Keenan did an amazing, this is a really amazing uh, transition that Keenan does. Look how quickly this foot that he has finds the lapel. His feet just find the lapel out of nowhere. On, I would say on most people, that would have been a, a really strong passing opportunity. But because Keenan is the lanky worm god that he is, I mean, just, just, just take a minute to really admire this here. I mean, I admire a decent lapel player as well. Look at that just quick reaction time that Keenan had. That was amazing. Uh, watching that, re-watching that again, it, it, is, it is really amazing the technique that he has. Now he's playing like a spider guard 
and now he's really starting to wrap me up in these positions and I'm not having a good time. I, I have found a recent uh, counter to all this garbage that he's doing, but I'll share, share that with you guys later. And here we are, I'm trying to, when, I, when I'm, I'll just show you guys real quick. When I'm in these lapel positions, I do, uh, oftentimes I re-grab the, the sleeve grip uh, that's holding my lapel. Now, why do I do this? Because I know whenever, whenever he starts making these lapel transitions and I have this sleeve grip, it's gonna be difficult for him to, to remake another, another, another grip. Like, because once he, his goal right now is he's gonna be trying to, to pass this lapel this lapel right here underneath his leg and pass it to this hand and he's gonna be trying to do this so I know that once he passes that if I can block this hand it's gonna be really really beneficial because once he passes this this grip this this lapel grip to this hand this is the attacking hand he's gonna start looking for these underhooks on my leg and start entering into these different worm or worm nato or or Polish worm rider or squid guard techniques because this hand is most oftentimes the attacking hand so just keep that in mind the same side hand of my lapel that he's trying to attack is always going to be the attacking hand. It's a really good tip right there. And there he let go of the lapel. I should have acted there. I, that was a mistake on my end. But now I let him, you know, I let him start setting up his, his A game. It was silly of me. Right when he let go of the lapel, I should have gone like that. But I made a mistake. It's all right. As you can see, I'm just driving forward knee pressure. Um, when I'm in this worm guard position, uh, Keenan is constantly trying to get his knee line over my knee line. And if he can achieve that, I'm in big trouble. So his right knee is trying to right now crawl over my knee. See how he's, he's lifting his hips? And now he's circling underneath. Really, really beautiful transition by Keenan there. And I kind of accept the position. And I, I think to myself, well, if I can get into 50-50, I've been trying this new sweep lately. And you guys will see that sweep that I actually do hit. And I was up by two points in this scenario, but now, now I believe it's 2-2. But you see how this is a really cool transition. So in 50-50, it's always a great idea to, to act quickly. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm going to unlock my legs and I start reaching for that, that far side hook, right? Look for, I'm reaching, 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 and I finally get this far side hook. I kind of reach it around the back. And now I'm in a much stronger position and I can start using uh, this to off-balance him. See how I off-balance him a little bit? And now, now I'm about to get to this, uh, this sweep that I actually saw Gabriel Argus and Flippa Pin and use a lot. Uh, it's from the 50-50, it's kind of from a modified 50-50. See how I, I kind of, I take out my hook. So here we are, I bring it around. I take out my hook, he off, he's off balanced. I take out this hook here and I'm gonna use this to push his calf away. So that will allow me to use my right leg to now hook around this leg here. It's a pretty neat transition. We'll, we'll go over it in a second. See how I extend it away? And now I'm in this really, really strong position. And as you saw a second ago, you can't really see from this angle. Let me just scoot back a little bit and watch it again. Once I get this hook here on the leg, now I'm gonna start looking. See how I have the pant grip here? It's kind of tough to see, but I, I just have a pant grip in this position. I'm gonna start looking for this underhook on this leg because that's gonna give me a lot more power from this position and really start torquing his leg and allowing allowing me to sweep him to this side. And also, you can't really see at this at this moment in time, but I am also controlling his sleeve because I know now that I have this this lock, it's gonna be very very easy for me to tilt him to this direction and get that nice sweep. See how I reach around on the underhook? And now I put my foot on top of my other foot. And that's gonna allow me to do this, this classic tilt sweep. It's almost like a half guard tilt sweep. And see how I keep this nice little twister hook here? That's gonna allow me to, to, to climb up into a better, stronger passing position from the get-go. I'm almost in a leg drag position here, but Keenan defends very well and he's able to pull his knee out of the situation. See how a second ago, it's a mistake on my end. I should not have let him uh, pull that knee out, but see how right now I should be pulling this, this leg across. As I'm attempting to, I'm trying to pull this leg across into a stronger leg drag position, but it, it, Keenan does very well. He pulls his leg out from the position, and now his knee is no longer across my, uh, my chest line, so it's going to be difficult for me to really uh, pass from here, honestly, unless I do something explosive, which I, I'm, not, I'm not a huge fan of just exploding into different things. But I am in a, a pretty decent position here. I should have 
I personally, I think I should have uh, done an explosive movement. I, I think I should have maybe uh, grabbed uh, his bottom pant with my left arm and then kind of done a long step to this side here. That would have been the best case scenario. That's what I should have done. Now I'm really just trying to stay heavy because I know I'm in a strong position here. I want to get closer and closer. I'm trying to enter this over, over pass that I like to do, but because his leg in the way, is, it's just not going to work. And Keenan defends well, and he, he almost comes up on a sweep there. Really, really nice defense by Keenan. And he actually, he came up so strong, as you saw here in a second. He came up so strong, and he was able, he, he, Keenan has very good wrestling. He came up very strong, and he was able to get, because I, I should have kept, you see how I, I, I had this, this classic underhook here? You'll see in a second, I'll pause it. But he comes up right here, and I have this underhook. I really, really should have just kept this underhook, but I was really, I was afraid that he had this pant grip, and it seemed like he was very strong, and I thought to myself I would, I would reach over the arm, as you'll see here in a second, and then break the grip. I should have, I should have, in hindsight, I should have just, just kept the underhook. But in reaching for the overhook, I gave him the opportunity to reach for this, this underhook on my back and start going for a body lock. And I, I felt right away when he, when he started reaching, I knew I was in big trouble here and I had to pull, even though I was gonna give up two points, because this is two points for Keenan in this situation. So I have to pull, and I pull into almost like a close guard, Hodger Gracie style position. And I, I actually love this position a lot, this Hodger Gracie style position. And you see I'm just leg pummeling, just trying not to get passed right away because Keenan, Keenan does very, very well uh, one thing. Whenever he sweeps, he tries to pass right away. He doesn't wait. Um, and that's something that I need to work on for sure. Uh, just just being more more aggressive after, after I sweep or after I have a takedown. And you can see I'm just inverting here, just trying to do whatever I can to, to stop this this kind of pass. Now he's entering to this over under position here. And this is a position that I normally enjoy defending a lot because I do really, really like this this uh, this kind of armpit uh, escape. As you can see here, see how I'm grabbing the, the armpit? This is a very, very commonly taught escape in the over under position. Kind of like you kind of throw your opponent to the side and his head, your, your goal basically, when you're defending the over under, your goal is to bring your opponent's head to that other side and then start kind of climbing up or just pushing away, okay? But uh, Keenan knows that I like to do this and he's, I've tried this to him many, many times. Sometimes it works and this time it did not. So we'll see what happens. So I tried this, it's not working. He actually just kind of like flows with it. If he, if he had tried to keep that underhook, his face would have flown to the other side and he would have been in big trouble. But because he kind of just let it out like that, he kind of did a limp arm technique. Uh, excellent move by Keenan here, honestly. And now he's in this like over over position almost where he's over both my legs and he's actually over my knee as well he's in a very very strong half guard here and as you can see normally when i'm in these half guard positions getting smashed i always do like to try and find some sort of butterfly hook just to start creating a little bit of space that's always a great idea uh, to when your opponent is in a half guard uh, just trying to create as much space as possible, trying to get your frames in, trying to get any hook you can in, and really what I need to be doing, that I'm trying to do, it's just tough, is get this knee out of this pocket here. See how, see how, uh, see how my knee is stuck here in this position? Ideally, I really, really need to be trying to get my knee out and free, and then I'm really, really creating good space, and I will get out of the position. Let's see what goes on here. So as you can see, I'm creating this frame underneath his neck here. Just trying to create as much space as possible. Right now, I'm kind of just thinking to myself like, okay, I'm in a bad position. I'm gonna need to explode here. Whenever I feel any sort of movement from Keenan, I need to push away with everything I have and explode. That's kind of what I'm thinking when I'm in these positions here. Keenan is doing well controlling my, my tricep. I'm really just waiting on him to, to make any sort of mistake, any sort of, uh, quick movement for for me to push away and get my legs in this is when this is when strength is about to come in come into play see how i extend i bridge away and that's when he attempts to pass but because i have this really really strong frame on his neck here because i put that in beforehand i'm going to be able to to really push and, and frame and recover my guard if i didn't have this this frame here i would have it would have been a lost cause i would have been dead for rights 
See, I was trying to get around, and I, I finally get my leg pulling back inside, and now it's time to start setting up my guard again. Or actually, a reset, actually. Throwing the belt to the side. A little bit tired here. And as you can see, I'm always looking for this sleeve grip once again. I'm trying to trying to play that laser guard again. And I actually just had a video on that, if you guys want to check it out. It's on my YouTube, it was the most previous video to this video here. And see how again, this is actually what I showed in the video. When you're playing laser guard, you never want your want, never want to have uh, your opponent controlling your collar. See how Keenan is controlling my collar here? A great way to break this collar grip is as I'm, as I'm doing here, I go two on one sleeve. See, I'm going two on one sleeve. And I'm gonna extend away almost on, on my opponent's shoulder, almost on Keenan's shoulder here. And that's gonna break the, break the collar grip that he has. And then you'll see I do a nice transition with my hand. I kind of pull it to the side, trying to get that hand on the outside. So now that when that hand is on the outside, he'll no longer be able to grab my collar. So it's a great little tip there. When you're, if you're ever playing any lasso guard and your opponent's really putting a lot of pressure on you, he's grabbing the collars, it's a great idea to go two on one on the sleeve grip, push it away, break it away, and now you're free. And you see how I bring it to the side. Him having this, this leg grip is not a problem. And you see how, again, I'm reaching underneath my leg, just like the video I, I, I created just a, uh, a couple days ago. Um, I reach through my leg here. If I were to reach around my leg trying to get this tricep grip, it would just be counterproductive. It's always great to reach through the leg, so when I do take this lasso off, eventually I'll be in this strong laser position. Here we are, just playing this laser lasso, I like to call it. I think that's one of the coolest names I've ever heard. Now, I did, did you see how a second ago I just tried to clamp or, or clasp my legs around his, his body here? What I'm trying to do in this position is just trying to enter that, uh, that one leg through closed guard position. If I were to enter this position, I have many, many tilt sweeps. You guys can watch Hodger Gracie if you want to learn more about those techniques. And I'll, I'll be making little videos on that as well in the future. But his, he had good knee pressure. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't lock my leg. Here I should have, I should, I should right now, I should act and I should actively try and push away, maybe come up on a single leg, but silly me, I was a little bit tired and I did not uh, attempt to act right away, but it was, it was a mistake on my end to not act once I had this incredibly power, powerful position. Here's, uh, it's gold here, I, I gotta go for it, but silliness. Well, he is, he is controlling my leg, so it would be difficult. But right when he made this, this grip, as you saw, right when he made that collar grip and he has this pant grip, I'm in big trouble. Like, I should not have allowed that to happen. Right when he made this collar grip again, I am, without this lasso, if I had the lasso in, I would still be a little bit safe. But because I, my lasso is out, because I was attempting to, to enter those Hodger Gracie style positions, as you'll see here in a second, let me just move back. See how he's gonna start reaching for that collar grip? And he starts bringing the arm around. Look at him reaching, 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 and he grabs the collar grip. Now I'm in big trouble, big trouble. If I don't throw that lasso, I'm in big trouble. And I don't throw the lasso, I try and switch to a collar sleeve, and look, he has an excellent pass, and I try and roll right away. I try and, whenever I'm, I'm, I'm almost passed, or whenever somebody really passes my legs, that's the time when instinct needs to come in. The rest of the time when you're playing guard, instinct isn't, isn't overly important. You should be thinking, you should be calculating, you should be calculating your next move, but when you're past, instinct needs to kick on and you just need to defend for your life and get back to an open guard or just get into a safe position right away. And that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to roll and make things difficult for him, but you know, Keenan is pretty good. He follows me as I roll. Excellent, excellent transition to the back by Keenan. Let's just take a look at that real quick. See how he brings that knee? This knee right here is coming inside. That's a really, really important detail when you're trying to chase the back. This knee inserts insert inside, and then you'll see he'll go for the seatbelt right away. I'll let it play here. Look at the seatbelt control, and then he's gonna he's gonna dive his head around and take my back. Really, really nice transition by Keenan. A little sad that that happened, but that's okay. And now I'm just kind of de defending the choking hand. See how? See how I'm defending the choking hand here? I know that this hand is not gonna be able to choke me, um, so I'm not really worried about that. So I'm just gonna try and defend this choke hand and bring it to the other side. I'm gonna try and bring this, uh, I'm gonna try and bring this arm 
around my head and then start bringing my back to the mat. That's, that's my favorite way to escape the back, but I, as you'll see here in a second, I made a little mistake on my way. Here I am just watching the choking hand, little eye scratch. Keenan is just smiling. Look at that nasty little smile there. That's disgusting. I hate that right there. <laughs> Let's see. Gets that body lock. Uh, now that he has the body lock, I'm in big trouble here, honestly. I'm sorry. I bring the arm around, and silly me, I leave my arm behind. And you'll see what he does. Really, really nice technique, what he does here. Because I left my arm behind, it's going to be very easy. I, I basically gave him this, this silly little... Uh, Americana position here, a little arm lock. It doesn't feel good on your, your elbow, that's for sure. And look, I, you're just gonna pull it and raise his hips a little bit. And I have to tap, it, it doesn't feel good. So the match restarts. I just do a nice belt pull right back into the deli position. And now I'm back into collar sleeve, collar sleeve and lasso. I'm breaking the grip once again. I, you saw how he had the collar sleeve, the collar grip. I switched to double sleeve, double sleeve in the lasso because I don't want him to have that collar grip. I'm always looking to break that collar grip. And once again, you'll see how I'm being a little bit annoying uh, with my foot here. Uh, I'm trying to get this foot once again back to his shoulder or bicep, just trying to defend from here. I push away. And I do break the grip once again, but he knows he didn't like what I was doing before. So he's going to keep that collar grip and I need to keep that lasso grip. See how, see how I, I threw in my lasso again, because I did not want uh, the same situation which happened before to happen again. And I'm switching to more so like a, a lasso spider here. I don't normally play this position, but I was, uh, you know, he was passing from far away. So I uh, it's always a good idea, especially when your opponent is passing from far away. See how his legs are far away? He's hiding his legs from me. Preferably, I would be able to have this leg grip and I would be in more so a De La Hiva position. But he's passing uh, with his legs far away, like I was saying. So you have to, you have to constantly uh, find some sort of grip, some sort of combination uh, in order to keep your opponent uh, stuck and having to defend your at least, at least give your opponent some work all the time. Always use all the limbs you have, whether it be your arms, legs, everything. Use everything you can at all times. He's just putting pressure. He looks a little tired at the moment. That was a nice grip break by him. Let's, let's take a look at that real quick. Head pressure down. Let's see what he does here. He opens his arm like so. See how he's opening his hand? This is a really good idea. I like to do this as well from Spider Guard. You just start opening your arm like this and it really puts a lot of pressure on that sleeve grip. And he opens it enough. And now he's gonna bring that knee. See how he just created space? By opening his arm, he created space for his knee to be able to break my grip. Really, really nice grip break by Keenan here. And I right away, I, I square my hips back up because you never want uh, your opponent to be stepped over your leg, at least in the last position. And I start looking for this laser guard again. See, I'm once again in this laser guard. Now I'm in like a laser guard with this De La Hiva position here. Really, really strong position. You can see how my foot is on the hip as well. This is prime time basically for me to kick him away and start coming up on these single legs. It's another great attack from the laser guard. See, I come up on the single leg start driving him down. What I like to do from the single leg when I'm when I'm uh, when I don't have a lot of time and, I just, and you'll see in a second I didn't have much time at all. Um, I like to pull the guy to me. I like to kind of not necessarily run the pipe but I pull the guy's leg to me. See I walk back and I do a quick transition to this body lock double leg here and as you can see Keenan's ready to throw me here. So it's a little bit scary but um, uh, you'll see I, I was uh, my both of my arms were on his leg and I let go of the leg to reach for that body lock and also a knee tap here. And I'm gonna start running around his body to take him down. Keenan, out of, out of most everyone that I've, that I've trained with, defends single legs and body locks really, really well. A nice little handshake. And that's it guys. That was the, my analysis of my training session with Keenan Cornelius. You saw a lot, a lot of details in there. A lot of laser guard was played, a lot of X guard was played. Uh, mistakes were made, happen all the time. So I hope you all enjoyed this little match study here. Um, I'll be making more of these in the future, uh, not just on myself, but on others. And 
Unfortunately, I'm injured at the moment. I won't be competing anytime soon. I had a uh, meniscus reconstruction, um, so that's healing. But uh, I'm happy to make content for you all and just provide as much value to the Jiu-Jitsu community as possible. So I hope you guys are all staying well, safe, and I'll see you guys soon. Olus.